What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. We are here to give you guys some notes from today's uh, OTAs, and we've got all kinds of news and stuff that's happening. Um, James Washington is actually in a walking boot right now, and he did not practice, as well as Tyron Smith. Now, the interesting part about Tyron Smith not practicing today, well, you, you got to figure that the Cowboys aren't worried about Tyron Smith missing practice. We talking about practice, not a game, not a game now. We talking about practice. Uh, they're not so worried about him missing practice as they are missing the damn season. That's what they're really concerned about. Um, the interesting part about that is Josh Ball wasn't the one that stepped in. Tyler Smith wasn't the one who stepped in. Matt Walensko was the one who actually was in the spot for the starting role. Now, keep in mind, we talking about practice, not a game, not a game. Now we talking about OTA practices, and this is where they finally get to step it up a little bit, you know, start getting really closer to like having action without getting physical, like Olivia Newton, John, you cannot get physical, physical. You can't get physical at OTAs. You can't, you just can't because they did last year and they lost one of their practices this year because they said, Cowboys, you weren't soft in practice. You were physical and we're going to take some shit away from you. So that is interesting and kind of telling because here's where another twist is kind of out here. The other twist being Tyler Smith was working with the second group. It was Connor McGovern, the governor, actually playing the starting role, at least right now in practice, the first, second OTA practice. Not a game. We talking about OTA practices. Um, maybe we're just kind of reading into that a little bit more than really needs to be. It's just it is what it is. Um, more concerning is, is James Washington in the walking boot. A couple of things here. One. My quarterback, Dak Prescott. That's right, Dak Prescott. Um, Dak says he feels the best he's felt in forever. Um, that there's no restriction. It's about just getting better on the field. And a couple of things to note on this, because as was reported last year, in fact, early, it was actually reported first here on the Joe Boo Sports Report before others talked about it, was the second surgery that Dak Prescott had. Um Dak Prescott actually had a clean out surgery on his ankle. It had nothing to do with the break that he had, but it was basically bone spurs and stuff and junk that were floating in his foot that had been there for a number of years. It didn't stop him from playing per se, but since he was already getting all the other work done, they thought it was a good time to go ahead and clean that up as well. So he's probably even moving better now than he did before the injury happened as well. Because again, you know, it's kind of like when you oil your, your, you know, you got something that's squeaking and you oil it, it's a lot smoother. So we have that situation. But another little tad bit here is he had a demand of the training staff of moving C.D. Lamb's locker right next to his. That's right. C.D. is right there by Dak Prescott. So we've had that happen. Um, other notes of interest. Other notes of interest. Yesterday, um, if you looked at Twitter after the ungodly shooting at the elementary school, um, a lot of players in the Dallas Cowboys organization all reacted to what happened. And um, I don't know that anything will change. I have my own personal thoughts on the situation. But unfortunately, uh, the world is so divided that if you say anything of any magnitude, you're going to piss some people off and, and get cussed out. So I'll, I'll kind of keep my thoughts right now to myself. But Demarcus Lawrence was very vocal last night about asking schools if they need help for security and things like that and how we could find out places that need more help. Um, and this is one of the things he said just a few minutes ago. If I don't feel safe sending my kids to school, I know other parents feel the same way. 
In the locker room, I hit my wife up. Hey, how are, how are the kids? Are they home yet? It's something you wouldn't expect, but this is what we are now dealing with. And it's, um, it's sad that you have to worry about dropping your kids off at school. Um, I've got to actually, da-da-dunt, da-da-dunt, uh, a damn Gina report. Shout out to Gina. Mike McCarthy got choked up talking about the school shooting. Um, it hits home for him. <clears throat> Having your daughters in school, we got to do better. To see this, there has to be a better way. We know there's a better way. It makes me sick, as I'm sure it does for everybody. So there's definitely a lot of thoughts like that right now. Um, DeMarcus, going back to DeMarcus Lawrence. DeMarcus Lawrence, who has been a vocal guy for the Dallas Cowboys for quite a while, is seeming to be on a mission. Now, for me with DeMarcus Lawrence, when I think about DeMarcus Lawrence's career, and this is one of the reasons why I think DeMarcus Lawrence will actually have a really good season. Um, of course, his rookie year, he had two sacks, which were in the playoffs against the Lions. Um, the next year, you know, he was un- not hurt. The next year, I believe he had seven or eight sacks. A, a breakout year, you know, for a sophomore. You know, it was a good season. But then the offseason, he had back surgery, and he ended up coming back from the back surgery and got hit with a four-game suspension for PEDs. And that kind of screwed up that season. He ended up with one sack. So we looked at this and say, not injured going into offseason, seven, eight sacks. Injured surgery, one sack. Okay? Finished up that season. No surgery, although people figured that maybe this guy's going to be a bust. 14 sacks. Finishes up that season, follows it up with 10. The next season, we end up having the contract dispute and the shoulder surgery. Drops down to like five and a half. The next year, injury, surgery again, six sacks. And so you look at it, every year that he's had work done in the offseason, he's been not as good well this is a year that he hasn't had any work done this off season so he's able to practice fully right now and this is what he said on his mentality of the season now remember talk is cheap let's see what you actually do on the field but you like the mentality at least become the sack leader again i let a rookie show me up last year shout out to my boy micah reinstate my dominance let everybody know how I'm coming, how I feel, and the type of respect I'm going to demand when I step on the field. Okay. I like that. I like that mentality. I like the fact that you have some tenacity here and that you're not just happy to be collecting a check. I want to see the work on the field. I want to see the leadership. I want to see the sacks and people, you know, having to game plan against you. I, I, I absolutely positively love that one. Um, that's the main stuff that we have James Washington in a walking boot CeeDee Lamb's locker being moved by um, Dak Prescott Um, uh, Tyron Smith not practicing Um, Matt Bolensko playing the starting right uh, left tackle Um, Tyler Smith second team um I think Zeke has a new helmet. And Cooper Rush picked off by Marquez Bell. So I think that's about all of what we have yesterday from today's earlier stuff. We'll see whatever else comes out um, later on um, with the Cowboys. Thus far, I like what I'm hearing, like what I'm seeing. And this is where all of a sudden you start to believe again. You know what I mean? We have been disillusioned all off season, you know, that, that the Cowboys stink and um, we haven't done anything to get better and stuff. And then we get the players on the field. We start building up some hype and some hope and things and hope that uh, they're going to be able to turn things on and, and go through here. I, I almost find it comical because what usually happens, and this, this is so funny, when a team wins the NFC East in past years, if they're not the Cowboys, they automatically think that they're going to be taking the next step the next year. 
you know, when the Eagles, they won the division and uh, went to the Super Bowl, oh, they're going to be dominant for years. They didn't say the Eagles are going to take a step back and, you know, the Cowboys win the division or something like that. Washington, you know, it's 7-9 and nine in a weak division. They win the division. They go on and say, oh, the Washington football team, they've got it together. They're ready to take the next step. You know, they're going to win the division again. When it comes to the Cowboys, just like in 2016, when they won the division, they turned around and they picked the Giants. They said, oh, the Giants, they're going to be better than the Cowboys. They've got this. You know, um, of course, the Cowboys win it. Oh, there's the curse. The, the Eagles, they're going to get it. They never do that with the other teams. They always pick the team that won the division to win it the next year, as long as they're not the Cowboys. Just some food for thought. But um, I hope that you guys are all having a great day. And um, I'll leave you guys with this. Come on, Danny. Run it, Danny. Don't fumble it. Don't fumble it. Oh. I just <laughs> said this thing. Don't fumble it. Rasheed. Let's go. Rasheed, look. You know you're. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it.